Payton. I'm the independent candidate, Truth Matters, for governor. I'm running this cycle, as I have been before, to help people understand their rights and to step into them. I've never wanted to be part of the established political organization, and I'll tell you simply why. Because my God is the God of love, compassion, freedom, creativity, hope, service, and the compassion that I have for others is enormous. The God of politicians and politics and government in general is the God of control, the God of war, the God of taxation, the God of coercion, of false authority, fear, and that's not what I serve. So I'm in the 2020 election as the Truth Matters candidate because the truth does matter. And really the truth is, is that we don't have any rights if we don't know our rights. Too many Vermonters do not know their constitutional rights. Therefore, they have allowed them to be taken away. I'm organizing people to restore them and to also act responsibly. Okay, the next question is, uh, what impact will it have when I am elected? Um, first of all, I don't expect to be elected in a rigged uh, system where some candidates are ghosted. But if I were elected, I would make certain that our elections would fairly and squarely feature all the candidates that, they, uh, that the voters put onto the ballot. So... If and when I am elected, what we will be, getting, be doing is carefully taking into consideration the ways that we need to make an economy based on a compassion, rewarding acts of virtue, or rather than rewarding ruthlessness or uh, extreme profiteering. So we're going to have to figure out a monetary system that serves the humane and ways that we want to uh, support one another, support in a clean environment, in support of a proper uh, society. So uh, I will enact Article 7 of our Constitution, which, if you haven't looked at it, gives us the indubitable, indefeasible, and unalienable right to reform and transform government. And we're very lucky to have that in our constitution. All right, the next question is about the budget. And it's asking uh, the mounting expense challenges. Now, I've been running for a long time and in my capacity to increase the amount of money we have in circulation because having a, a scarcity of money in a fiat system is really a, a, a fraudulent, a fraud in and of itself. We ought to be able to have enough money to participate in an economy uh, with dignity. Uh, doing so would require that uh, you elect somebody like me who is not in service to the corporate system. And of course, uh, you're gonna get featured the people who are in service of the corporate system by the corporate mainstream press, but nonetheless, what I would do is uh, establish the public bank and also institute a people's exchange, remembering that we need to keep cash in circulation because that's an element of privacy and anonymity when we do exchanges which are extremely important. So the people's exchange would be implemented for all the business we can do in Vermont by and for Vermonters. This would free up a lot of money. Uh, for U.S. dollars. So taking control of our monetary system is something that sovereigns do collectively for the things they need. Okay, this is a question of what I think on uh, U.S. immigration policy. And this is uh, the way I think about it. Uh, I think about the state of Vermont, the way I think about my house. Uh, I want people that I invite in there. And I do want to help those in need. 
Um, I don't want people coming in to take my things. I want it to be an honorable uh, relationship with everybody that comes to my door. I want to uh, protect myself. I don't want to be foolish and leave my borders or my uh, leave my doors open or without anything guarding there. So, but I, I really uh, find it revolting that uh, any form of government would talk about any humans as if they weren't equally right and equally righteous under God to be wherever they are. So this sort of uh, classification of some humans as subclass and some others as um, higher class is totally inappropriate. We are all equal and our relationship to God is direct. And that is true for every single one. It's really about our relationship, whether we are good for our word, whether we have integrity, whether we help uphold and uplift society around us. Okay, the next question is about health care, of whether it should be a human right. Um, what I am uh, advising people to do is to parse out whether health care is part and parcel to a corporation making profit, because the two don't mix. We do want everybody to be healthy and well. And for the most part, if we had more organic food, if we had less red dye, less Monsanto, less Roundup, and less stress, and more vitamins, and more many more things that would help us relax into our own creativity, we would be much healthier. And sadly, our allopathic medical system it promotes sickness for its profit, as this COVID is also um, a power grab, and it's also a false narrative. Um, there's been a great deal of harm that's done, been done emotionally, particularly to the elders of the state, uh, to the people of the state, and it's in service, of course, to the ruthless uh, uh, billionaires on this planet. So uh, our health care needs to be have integrity. And, and of course, we want everybody to be well. So we need to put money into health care systems that have integrity, that aren't about profiteering. So the next question is on racial equity. And do I support an apology for Vermont's role in slavery and reparations on the state level? Well, first of all, Vermont was the first state to eliminate slavery per se. And uh, that is a very uh, something to be very proud of. Um, we also have been uh, had a terrible monetary system that promotes inequity, that it promotes false competition, that it promotes false scarcity. So I've been running from the very beginning so that we as sovereigns design a system of money. How do we do business exchanges that will promote the virtues? And when we do that, we will begin to reduce the fears behind those who uh, are afraid of other people of races, of different races, because when everybody has enough money to do the things that their capacity warrants, we will see a blossoming of creativity uh, when we're not using money as personal power, but rather as a means to express our humanity and our love for one another. Uh, that is where we need to go um, because no amount of money is going to repair the damage. Only transformation will. My priority for the next biennium, and I will tell you I'm going to be continuing to work and offer the guidance that I can to those who are willing to step forward and become the uh, self-governing system, the self-governing sovereigns of Vermont. Uh, and what I need to do is to help people to know their rights, to learn their constitutional rights, to understand how the law is theirs if they know it and if they know how 
to stand up for their rights. So we will be organizing, we already are, in people's assemblies. We're going to have an inquiry into this COVID. We're going to be standing up for our freedoms, our individual freedom, because in freedom, humanity blossoms in control and fear, tyranny and fascism do. So wherever you feel that you're being motivated by fear, you probably are being um, susceptible to fascist tendencies. Uh, remember that uh, ruthlessness is always conspiring against humanity. So we, we need to rebuild through people's assemblies and neighborhood councils how we do self-governance. Well, why should Vermonters elect me? Well, because I will help our equality be restored and I will help us to work together. I will help your sovereignty to come forward so you understand what that means and what those rights mean. I will help connect people in people's assemblies and neighborhood councils and help us go through a transformation where the myriad of injustices and the just uh, total injustice of our monetary system gets put aside and we say goodbye to it as we begin mindfully, wisely, and correctly to move into a place where we can apply our creativity, our self-care, our care for one another and the planet in, in a very loving way, in a very powerful way. Um, so I'm very, very thrilled to see the women stepping forward and working together in a seamless way, in a supportive way, because what we do is we hold space. We hold safe space. That's what we do for this transformation so that we can blossom into a renaissance where humanity is uplifted, not continually disgraced and degraded.